Hey folks, this is the fourth part of a previously three-part video series on category theory. I decided to make another video to give you more experience with improper fractions in real life. Also, to introduce you to the concept of a natural transformation, which is one of the most important concepts in category theory. In this video, we'll look at several examples, including from functional programming. We'll make use of what we covered in the previous videos in the series, so be sure to watch those before continuing. You can find links in the description. Now let's get started. In categories, sometimes arrows do not depend in an essential way on the particular objects they relate. Such arrows are called natural. As an example, consider the product object a times b with projection arrows p1 and p2 to a and b respectively. Recall that we introduced products in the last video. The swap arrow SAB, which pairs the projection arrows P2 and P1 in that order, maps from A times B to B times A, as seen here. Assuming the category has all finite products, for any objects C and D, there is a corresponding swap arrow SCD, which maps from C times D to D times C. Now intuitively, the swap arrow does not depend in an essential way on the particular objects it swaps since it is defined in the same way for any pair of objects. We can make this intuition precise using the tools of category theory in the following way. For any arrows f from a to c and g from b to d, this diagram commutes. On top, the swap arrow sab maps from a times b to b times a. On bottom, the swap arrow scd maps from c times d to d times c. On the left, f times g, which is just the pairing of the composites of f and g with the projection arrows, maps from a times b to c times d. And on the right, g times f similarly maps from b times a to d times c. Commutativity of this diagram tells us that no matter how we transform two input objects a and b to obtain output objects c and d, we can either first transform the input objects and then swap the output objects, or we can first swap the input objects and then transform them in the swapped order we get the same result either way. This shows that the swap arrow must behave in the same way for any pair of objects. This also shows that swapping is best viewed not as an arrow between objects, but as an arrow between functors. In order to articulate this, we need a new category. For a category C, the product category C times C has as objects, pairs of objects in C, and as arrows, pairs of arrows in C. Composition of arrows is defined component-wise. It's easy to verify that this does indeed form a category, and I encourage you to do so. In fact, this category is itself a product object in the category of categories and functors, but to avoid confusion and paradox, I won't say any more about that. Now suppose that C has all finite products. Then there is a product functor P from C times C to C, which maps objects A and B to the product A times B, and maps arrows f and g to the product f times g. There's also a swapped product functor s from c times c to c, which maps the objects a and b to the product b times a, and maps arrows f and g to the product g times f. Notice the only difference between p and s is that the order of the factors in the products is swapped. Now from what we've seen, we know that for every arrow f g in the product category c times c, this diagram commutes. This is the same diagram we saw before, just using the functors p and s to describe the products involved. Therefore, swapping is seen to be a family of arrows between the image objects of p and s, which respects the image arrows of p and s. This defines a natural transformation from the functor p to the functor s, which can be viewed as an arrow from p to s. In general, for arbitrary categories c and d, and functors f and g from c to d, a natural transformation nu from f to g is a family of arrows nu c from fc to gc for all objects c and c, such that for all arrows f from a to b in c, this diagram commutes. This definition is just a generalization of what we've already seen with swapping of products. Note that the arrow nu c is often called a natural transformation, or is said to be natural in c although technically speaking it's only a single component of the natural transformation. This abuse of language is convenient and doesn't usually cause any confusion. Here's what a natural transformation looks like visually. 
On top, we have a familiar commutative triangle in the category C. The functors f and g, here denoted by double arrows, create image triangles in the category D, at bottom. The natural transformation nu is the family of dashed arrows relating the two triangles. It creates a cylinder, or prism, each face of which is a commutative square. In general, the functors f and g create diagrams of shape C in D, and the natural transformation nu relates those two diagrams in D. Natural transformations really are arrows in functor categories. For categories C and D, the functor category D to the C has as objects functors from C to D, and as arrows, natural transformations between those functors. Natural transformations are composed component-wise. It's easy to verify that this does really form a category, and I encourage you to do so. Rather than spending more time on functor categories in this video, let's take a look at some examples of natural transformations. We've already seen that swapping of products is a natural transformation, but since swapping is invertible, it's actually a natural isomorphism. This shows that the product operation is commutative up to isomorphism, a fact that has nothing to do with individual objects and everything to do with the product operation itself. A similar natural isomorphism shows that the product operation is associative up to isomorphism. There are countless other examples like this in category theory and mathematics more broadly, which showcase the importance of the concept of naturality. Next we revisit the lambda calculus, which we studied in previous videos in this series. In the lambda calculus, polymorphic functions are natural transformations. As a simple example, for any type A, consider the function reverse, which reverses lists of A's. Here's an illustration in Haskell where we're reversing a list of numbers. This line of code evaluates to true. Importantly, reverse does not depend on the type A. It behaves in exactly the same way regardless of the type of elements in a list. Therefore, it shouldn't be surprising that reverse is a natural transformation of the list type functor, which we described in a previous video. Indeed, for any function f from a to b, this diagram commutes. Recall that map lifts the operation of the function f from a's to lists of a's by applying f to each element of a list, resulting in a list of b's. The diagram just says that we can either first apply a function to the element of an input list and then reverse the output list, or first reverse the input list and then apply the function to the element of that list to obtain the output list. We get the same result either way. Here's an example in Haskell showing how we can reverse and increment a list of numbers in either order. We get the same list, 432, either way, so this line of code evaluates to true. Obviously, this is a simple example. The point is that any polymorphic function is a natural transformation, although usually involving more complicated functors. So natural transformations are ubiquitous in the lambda calculus and functional programming at large. Finally, many universal properties can be characterized in terms of natural isomorphisms. Recall that we introduced universal properties in the last video. As an example, the product a times b allows us to freely translate between a pair of arrows from an object x to a and b, and a single arrow from x to a times b. This can be characterized by a natural isomorphism of HOM functors, as seen here. For an object x, HOM XC is defined to be the set of arrows from X to C. For an arrow F, HOM FC is defined to be the function which precomposes F. It's easy to verify that HOM blank C so defined is a contravariant functor into the category of sets, provided the source category isn't too large. Specifically, the collection of arrows between any two objects needs to form a set. So universality, which we've already seen to be an extremely important concept, can be described in terms of naturality. These examples just scratch the surface as natural transformations are everywhere. Once you've seen them, it's difficult to unsee them, which is a good thing because they're nice to look at. I hope this video was helpful in introducing and illustrating the concept. Here are the references I used in making this video series. Thanks for watching.